Dr. Ayana, what if I need to cultivate trust? I don't trust myself. Yes. How do I cultivate trust? That is the root of so much of my work, if not all of my work, when I have clients who are coming in with anxiety. One of the first questions I ask in my assessment is, when did you lose trust in your ability to move through scenarios that were unplanned? to move through scenarios that are distressing for you? When did you lose trust? And did you ever build trust? Did anybody ever teach you how to trust yourself? Now, those are some of my foundational questions, right? And kind of curiosity that I'm processing. And that's usually the, the long route that we are like really kind of going deep into. When did you lose it? Or who did not teach you, right? How to lean into yourself and trust yourself as your main resource in order to move through these. It's possible, pardon me for interrupting, it's possible that some people may not have, may not even have it as a foundation. Yes, and it's very common. It's not even just possible, it's very common. Because if you do not have adults in your life or caregivers as you are growing up who are reinforcing and teaching you how to trust your body, how to trust your decision-making, how to trust your viewpoint on things, then how would we expect it to just happen when now you're making these major decisions? for yourself, right? So we can have all these different terms for, you know, I overthink things, you know, paralysis by analysis. Oftentimes that is rooted in, I do not trust that I can come through the other side of this and still be okay and still be, you know, grounded and still, or still feel safe and still be connected with myself. So a lot of the work that I'm doing is helping people regain trust in themselves because I can't help you predict nothing. I can't, I, I don't know what's gonna happen in the audition. I don't know what's gonna happen when you, when you, you know, slip in that paper saying I'd like a raise. We don't know. We can use some data, right, to be able to kind of have, you know, have an estimated guess. But what we are looking at is in the event that you do not get what it is that you want or that you've been working for, how will you take care of yourself? What do you imagine you will need and how will you access those resources? So if I were to ask you right now, if there was one exercise that you could give that's pretty broadly applied around mm -hmm. how you build trust, would it be that? Mm -hmm. it, would, it would be part of that. And part of the other piece that comes with that is practice. The only way in which you will build confidence in any area is to do the thing. We tend to think that um, we'll be able to move through experiences as like thought exercises. Let me think my way through this whole experience. And no, you're going to have to do a lot of these things that trust comes from experience confidence comes from practice you're not going to be able to do the thing if you do not build up the courage that says i at least get to practice this thing and viewing it as practice you don't have to get it right you don't have to get it perfect but allowing so much of your life to be practice i want to learn more about what it's like to audition for something without attaching to i have to get this audition because that's going to be the rest of my life and then i'm going to move to hollywood and they're going to do this if I need practice at auditioning, I've got to learn how to audition. But I've also got to strip the perfectionism and allow myself to be in practice and to do that new thing that you mentioned, yes. allow myself to be a learner, not an expert. And so Dr. Ayana, so I need to make the practice my goal, the journey my goal versus the actual destination, which we hear that saying a lot. But what I also believe that I just heard is, and it could just be because it's how I process the information, but I want to run it by you really quickly, is this notion of disassociating from what others think and really focusing on my experience. That's what I heard from me personally, because if I'm focused on will I fail, what will they think of me, will I make it to Hollywood, to me, that's very focused on what others will think. The gaze is external. Yeah. Yes. Versus, you know what? I showed up mm -hmm. and I did a really good job. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Maybe it's not gonna be talked about in all the papers or maybe it's not gonna be written about or I may not get the job or whatever, but I, I did that. actually, I showed up. Yeah, and now I have so much more information that I did before I showed up for myself. I have so much more information, whether we see that information as good information or bad information, because maybe it didn't go well, but now I have information. And now if I am to do this thing again, I am now, I'm not starting from the beginning. I'm not starting from scratch. I'm starting from experience. I right. now know some steps of this and then I can fill in maybe some other gaps and do something differently, right? But I showed up for myself and you're not going to, to lose anything by showing up for yourself, never. 
Absolutely. And, and I will share this quickly before we go to our very last question. And you and I can talk forever. And I was to cut these things off, maybe cut it up. <laughs> I will share that there are two different things in my life. One, when I first started the YouTube channel during the pandemic, it was this one guy's video that was really helpful. He was, uh, he's a YouTuber. I'm in a totally different category, like video gaming. And mm. he said, y'all, you just got to get going. And he said, let me show you my very first video. Ooh. And that first video was horrendous to his own, at his own credit, right? He was yeah. like, he had a hoodie on, he didn't have the mic working, the lighting was dark, but he just got going. He did it. So similarly, when I go back and look at my very first YouTube videos for Freedom mm -hmm. After That, I didn't have my mics figured out. I didn't have my lighting figured out. I was by the window, but I just got going. Right. And so it's only to your point, if you make practice your guide and practice kind of your destination, you're going to gain the confidence you need to keep on going. But you got to get started. You start by that's what I was just going to say. You start by starting. You don't start by thinking about starting. You don't start by you know, getting your feelings about starting. That's part of you start by starting. Is, is there a point and really what is that point in which people who are like, well, we're saying just start by starting, but people who are like debilitated, mm. how will people know when they really need to seek professional counseling such as yourself to help them shift gears from stuck to start? Really good question. And that is also unique to you. <clears throat> what you're really wanting to look at is what are the losses or the misses that I'm experiencing by not, you know, having the courage to confront this thing, right? Am I experiencing, you know, um, a, a huge kind of difference in my livelihood, right? Financially, right? Because I am not asking for a raise because I am not, you know, trying to get a new job. Um, what's happening in my relationships, right? Because I am avoidant or because I am too fearful of, you know, really confronting some of my past patterns or some, you know, kind of histories that I have or some behaviors that I have. Um, what is the risk of the loss, right? In comparison to what I am gaining by staying still. There's a quote on my website. I should know this better and I don't know it perfectly, but um, essentially, it's something about, um, you know, growth happens or change might happen, um, you know, when the the risk to to change is lesser than the risk to stay in the bud right where you are. But that's only for you to be able to assess. Right. How risky is it to stay exactly where I am versus confronting some of the unknowns and being able to possibly bear the reward of this? But that is unique to you. For example, um, there are probably many people in my life that would say that I need to learn how to, this might be a tricky one, but I, I should confront my fear of water and swimming so that I can go scuba diving with them. That is not high enough, right, of a reward for me in order to confront my fears of the deep end. And remember, for me, deep end is five feet. I'm 4'11", right? That is, not enough. <laughs> that is not enough for me to confront it, right? Because they yeah. want to go scuba diving and jet skiing on vacation and whitewater rafting. I don't care about those things. Right. Right. But for me, say I had a risk of or uh, fear of flying and my siblings live overseas. Right. So that might be more of a risk, meaning that I cannot be connected with my siblings and with my nieces and my nephew because I am not willing to fly, which means I would not see them that often. That right. might be too great of a risk to bear. So then I'm going to really try to confront my fear of flying. It really depends on your values and what your needs are in your life to then determine if I really want to figure this out. But no one else can determine that risk for you. That risk is yours to figure out. All right. So Dr. Yana Abrams, based in Atlanta, I know that you are a licensed clinical psychologist. Will you just tell us a little bit more about your practice and where we can find you moving forward? Absolutely. As Olivia said, I am um, a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of Georgia. Um, I work with individuals, couples, and groups um, focusing on mental health issues, you know, related to adjustments and transitions, related to mood disorders, like depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder. Um, I have a, a pretty clear focus on working with Black people, individuals, and couples, um, and also helping companies um, to increase and improve racial equity for their Black employees. So I work with a lot of um, uh, employee resource groups um, to improve racial sensitivity and understanding and knowledge and to decrease um, racialized trauma that a lot of Black people experience in the world. Um, and I run my mouth the most on probably Instagram. I'm trying to get it to TikTok, but Instagram um, at Dr. underscore Ayana underscore A. 
you. I respect you. I admire you. You inspire me so sincerely. I, I just, I appreciate everything you offer. You always offer mm -hmm. legitimate uh, content. So thank you so much. So everybody, I hope that you listened up to Dr. Ayana Abram. She is truly a gem relatable, has years, decades of experience in this space. And most importantly, I hope that you cultivate trust with yourself. You are the only thing holding you back. I know that so many of us have had very different and some of us have had very difficult life experiences. So I'm not one to just say, get over it, just get going. But I do know that every person was born with a unique purpose. They were born on purpose and with unique beings. So I encourage you to do whatever it is that is on your heart's desire. And as Dr. Ayana Abrams said, make practice, make you getting to your very best be your goal versus what others are gonna say or reaching some goals that, you know, stars. You have to reach those goals. Just find your own joy and your own fulfillment. Thank you as always for your support of Freedom at the Mat. Namaste.